this up. Let's do it. Same thing in the leg. You have two sets of veins, one set of arteries. So you have deep and superficial, the deep veins. Parallel the arteries, if you look on the bottom right of page 30, you will see that there is only one superficial vein for, that you're responsible for the leg, and that's number 66. Go ahead and put a star next to 66. Great saphenous vein. If you look at the rest of them, on the bottom right, there are arterial counterparts in the left column. The only one that doesn't have one is great saphenous vein. Everybody got it? All right. And there it is. It basically runs up the medial, the leg and thigh. It finally goes deep in the femoral triangle. Okay. There in dark blue is the femoral vein, so that would be 61R. And I can tell because it's paralleling the artery. Can you see it paralleling the artery? Mm -hmm. So these, it's hard to do this in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. But this is supposed to be deep. This is superficial. Okay. Everybody got it? When the one that's superficial goes deep, does it change names when yes. it's deep? There it is there again, great saphenous vein, 66L. It goes, can you see it going deep in the femoral triangle? Everybody see it going deep in the femoral triangle? Close up of that. Same thing here, it's going deep in the femoral triangle. All right, so we're going up. Uh, in reverse order here for veins. This is between those arterial branches going to the femoral condyles and the tibial condyles. So this is the left popliteal vein, 62L. Dark blue, this is the beginning of 61L. This is where the femoral vein starts. Now we're going in reverse order. It starts in the back, goes next to the femur, comes out there. So that's the other end of the femoral vein. 61L. That little nub right there, that's the great stop in the stain going deep. <clears throat> Left great stop in the stain, cut off at the nub. When those lanes merge, it's called left external iliac vein, 60L. So they merge and what's the green? That's where they merge. 66L, it's just the nub of 66L. When it merges, it becomes 60L. There are 60 R and L right there. This is 59 R and L right there, anterior view. Figure it out, which one's right and which one's left. 59. When 60 and 59 fuses, it comes 58 R and L. Common iliac vein. Okay. When the common iliac veins merge, it's inferior vena cava, 54. Oh, by the way, if you have your textbooks out, get it out and open it to the circulatory chapter. Who has textbooks here? Turn it to the left, the cardiac. Around page 700. It's going to bear.
vary depending on which edition you have. You want to look for the figure that says hepatic portal system. This one's on page 713. System. Just leave it open and then we'll come back to it. It varies from edition to edition. Take a textbook, bring it back to me when you put it down today. side now. I'll get to it in just a minute, but it'll, it'll be ready. All right, same color arrows here. External iliac veins are in blue. Internal iliac veins are in green. Common iliac veins are in yellow. 54, inferior vena cava is in pink. Notice that the inferior vena cava in the anterior view is always to the right of the descending abdominal aorta. Everybody see that? Yep. And that's because this pipe is headed toward the right atrium. That's why it's on the right. The descending aorta came out of the left ventricle. That's why it's on the left. Everybody, does that make sense? Cool. This is going to be tough. All right. <clears throat> Again, on the half size guys, they don't have internal iliac vessels arteries or veins. These are all... So dark blue is femoral, light blue is external iliac, yellow is common iliac. Okay. No internal iliacs on this model. Okay. In the entire Abdominal, abdominal region, there is only three veins that parallel arteries. Only three. And three of them are right here. Right and left renal veins parallel the arteries. So this is 56 R, 56 L. This is a male because there's a prostate here. This is the only other one that parallels the artery. The right testicular vein 57R. These three, boom, boom, and boom, are the only veins that parallel arteries. Everything else is different. Even the left testicular vein, here in this yellow one, does not go into the inferior vena cava. It goes into the renal. And then the blood can go into the inferior vena cava from the renal. Everybody see that? <coughs> it does not parallel. The right one does, not the left one. Does everybody see that? Same thing here. These two parallel. This one parallels. You can see the parallel right here. This one does not parallel. The right testicular vein goes here first. Everybody see that? 
Any questions? And this is why. <clears throat> and I mentioned this today in lecture. The blood from the stomach to the rectum filters through the liver before going into the general circulation. You guys remember me saying this? Remember that a portal vein is between two capillary beds. The first one being in the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. The second capillary bed is the liver sinusoids. Is this like too brutal to do? No. Shall we just call it right now? You guys can just fill in the blanks yourself. No, no, no. Because no. I, I, I could just get to grading. Yeah. Now you want me to do this? Yeah. Yes. All right. Now on your textbook, where you could actually see the hepatic portal system, turn to the next page and look at the little box that says study tip. Does everybody see the little figure that says study tip? A learning strategy? The hepatic portal bay, kind of, the whole system kind of looks like a chair. All right, let me. Uh, oh, I see it. See if I can draw this out for you. So here's the liver on the right. Basically, there's two ways in. Bloodwise. And here's the chair, kind of slanted a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to draw the two ways in and the one way out. But let's do the hepatic coronal system first. Switch back and forth between the figure uh, of the actual veins and then the figure of the chair. And on your uh, page 30, we're now at the bottom, just above the box, where it says hepatic portal system. The back legs of the chair is the superior mesenteric vein. That's 69. And on this one, the back legs are in red. Oh, I see it, I see it. The front leg of the chair is the inferior mesenteric vein. That's 70 front legs of the chair. And this model has been cut off at the nub. And it's only this little bit of nub here is the front leg of the chair. Blue is 70, red is 69. The seat of the chair comes from the spleen. That's the splenic vein. 72. like the seat of the chair. You guys see it? Yeah. yeah. The back of the chair is the actual hepatic portal vein, 68. And it is one of the ways in. This would not be a comfortable chair to sit in. So the green arrow is the hepatic portal vein. This would not be a comfortable seat chair to sit in because you have the spur on the back of the chair here in orange and that's one of several gastric veins. 71. Orange. Yeah. Yeah, that's the orange one. Now this is where you got to think sequentially. Let's talk about the other way into the liver. This is going into the liver. Let me put it this way. Here's 15, descending abdominal aorta. As soon as it comes out of the diaphragm, here's the first branch.
see how there's two ways in? Mm -hmm. So the celiac trunk is the first. Let me do it in purple. Is the first uh, artery that comes out of the descending abdominal aorta. It's 16. Common hepatic artery is 17. Splenic is 18. Left gastric artery is 19. Everybody see what I'm doing with this? Does everybody see how there's two ways in? Yes. Hepatic portal vein, common hepatic artery. You can see it on this figure right here. Common hepatic artery, right next to the hepatic portal vein, two ways in. Now again, these are running right next to each other, but I'm, I just kind of want to spread it out so it's not so confusing. Here's the inferior vena cava. What is that, 54? There's only one way out, and it depends on which side of the liver are you coming out of. If you're coming out of the larger right side of the liver, or the smaller left side of the liver, you should probably write that down somewhere. The right side of the liver is bigger. But these are the hepatic veins, 55. But this is the one way out, and it just depends on which side of the liver you're on. If you're on the right side of the liver, you're going to go out to 55R. If you're on the left side of the liver, you're going to go out 55L. For the liver. Two ways in. And 17. One way out. So if you think this through sequentially, You're never going to get confused what is hepatic portal vein and what is hepatic vein. Hepatic portal vein is going in, in purple. Hepatic veins are going out, if you're thinking this through sequentially. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Here you can't really tell in light blue which one is right and which one is left because they had to drain all over the place. But these are the 55s right here. So, 54. Pink, 69 in red, 70 in blue. These two are the renal veins, 56 R and L, but they parallel the arteries. The rest of these don't. Yellow is splenic, 72. Green is 68. Orange is 71. Does this, does this help at all? Yeah, that was helpful. And what are the capillaries called in the liver? We talked about it this morning. Is that one of the like tunics? No. It's the liver sinusoids. Thank you. All right, and fear of cava. <laughs> Four. Everybody see the hepatic triad here. Do you see how it's color coded? Yeah. Then you know that this is hepatic portal vein. This is common hepatic artery. 68, 17. Two ways in. Here's the one way out. 54 is in the vena cava. 55R, draining the larger right side of the liver. 55L, draining the smaller left side of the liver. The 
one way out. Here would be the cave of 54. 55R, this is posterior view, by the way, if you want to write that on the slide, posterior view. So right is right. 55R, 55L. Underneath the liver is the two ways in. 68, 17. Does it help if I use the same colors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Here being a all these are various hepatic veins that will eventually end up in 55 R and L. But here's the hepatic triad. So here's the two ways in, hepatic portal vein, common hepatic artery, 68 in green, 17 in yellow. Same color arrows, over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. Same color arrows. Do I need to go over these? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting close to the end. This is the chair here, but this is posterior view. So this is an anterior view, and you would be sitting on the chair like this. This is posterior view, so you'd be sitting on the chair like this. Okay. Everybody got it? Okay. Front legs of the chair is inferior mesenteric 70. Back leg of the chair that's going to the anterior, but you can still see this portion of the back legs of the chair, the 69. The seat of the chair is 72. Back of the chair is 68. All right, let's go to the boxes on the bottom of page 30. This is the only thing that's not microscopic, and this is the cerebroarterial circle, 33. It forms a circle around the pituitary. Oh. It used to be called Circle of Willis. Now I have two green arrows here. This is the end of six. Six R. 6L. This is where the internal carotids end, is at the cerebral arterial circle. Okay. So after going up through the carotid canals, they end up here. Everybody got it? All right. We got one vein, two arteries. You can tell this is a vein because it has valves. Mm -hmm. Each has three coats. We covered this in lecture this morning. So the same color arrows for both. Tunica intima in green. Tunica media in yellow. Tunica externa in light blue. This is the only model I'll have for the tunics of the blood vessels. The rest of this is going to be on the slide. So uh, for lab exam four and five, everybody look at me. Lab exam four and five, the extra credits on slides, projected okay. slides. So four and five are just going to be rotating stations one through 25. We're not going to use that counter anymore. Okay? All right, so let's look at blood cells. Red arrow is 34. What you need to write here is you need to write erythrocyte for the full point. Red blood cell gets you a half point. This spell red blood cell get no points. Green is a leukocyte, specifically a neutrophil. Erythrocytes don't have nuclei, leukocytes do. Sure. Leukocyte for the full point, okay. white blood cell for the half point. Did everybody write that down? Yeah. The little fragments are thrombocytes or platelets. You can actually use either word. Thrombocytes or platelets. Got it? Same 
many color arrows here. Erythrocyte in red, leukocytes in green. These are specifically neutrophils. And the little fragments are thrombocytes or platelets in blue. Everybody got this? All right. Arteries are thick-walled, veins are thin-walled, and because of that, please pay attention. In microscopic slides, arteries are always round, circular, and cross-sectional. Veins are not, they're too weak, because they're so thin-walled, but arteries will be circular and cross-sectional. Arteries will be circular and cross-sectional. And here are the three layers, tunica interna, tunica media, tunica externa. Veins, look how it's not circular or round because it collapses, it's too thin. It has the same three layers, but notice how the vast majority of this wall or coat is tunica externa in yellow. Mm -hmm. Tunica intima is always the same, it's just simple squamous. But the tunica media is really thin. Really most of this vessel wall is tunica externa. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Lymphatic vessels are even thinner walled than veins because they only have one tunic and they have to have valves. They're with the V valves there with the black arrows. The whole thing is lymphatic vessel, but the black arrows are pointing at a valve, a lymphatic valve. Any questions? Yeehaw.